video, you're going to learn how to close more car deals using the influence power of authority, what Kobe Bryant would have done if he was a car salesperson, and how wearing a suit can actually increase jaywalking at traffic lights. Hi, I'm Christian Younger, and welcome to another Automotive Sales Best Practice of the Week. If this is your first time here and you want to improve your sales skills and learn more about closing deals using psychology and find unbiased dealership product reviews, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn on the bell so you don't miss out on improving yourself. Okay, let's get to work. Early in childhood, it's typically our parents that first expose us to the value of following authority because they know more about the world than we do and they've got control over the punishment and reward systems. Children learn that following their directions typically serves them well. And then it's further reinforced by going to school with teachers and church, police, doctors. They help reinforce that power of authority throughout our lives. And why wouldn't you listen to high authority? I mean, usually it saves you time and it leads you down the correct path. However, because us humans, we want to speed things up and we're looking for life hacks so we can move through life a little quicker, Blindly following authority can lead to something that's dangerous called authority bias. Authority bias is the tendency to attribute greater accuracy to the opinion of an authority figure and to be more influenced by that person's opinion. It was the classic 1961 experiment at Yale University by Stanley Milgram and his group that first established authority bias's existence by measuring the extent to which a person would blindly follow an authority figure's request to go ahead and perform an act that obviously went against the subject's moral principles. What they did was they had participants that were led to believe that they were assisting in this unrelated experiment where they had to administer an electric shock to a learner. The learner would be asked questions, and if they got the questions incorrect, they would be shocked. As they got more questions incorrect, the shock was increased. Now, these fake shocks were gradually increased to levels that would have been fatal had this been real. Now, the results of this study are both surprising and disturbing in that Milgram found the majority of the subjects continued to administer the shocks to the learner, who was a paid actor, even when that learner begged in agony for them to quit. So I think it's easy to see from this study and many other studies like it that the power of authority is extremely, extremely influential and it can persuade people to doing things and maybe going against their moral principles. The shocking results from the Milgram experiment and others like it raise the question, how do we ethically use the persuasion power of authority to increase car sales or influence more sales? Well, it comes down to three factors. There's three ways to naturally increase your authority. Let's go through each one of them and see how we can use them to our advantage. Number one is knowledge. The more you know, understand, practice the subject, skill, or whatever action we're talking about, the better suited you are to help someone else understand it. I don't know if you remember, but when Kobe Bryant passed, most of the people, when they were eulogizing his life, they went ahead and talked about how he was a student of the game. He never quit learning. He was curious. He was always trying to pick up little pieces, little skills from other people's games, moves that he can go ahead and put into his repertoire. And let's think about it for a moment. If Kobe Bryant was a car salesman, not only would he just keep up on product knowledge, he would be the all-being knowing source of product knowledge for the entire dealership. Heck, he'd know his competition's lineup inside out and backwards. He'd be able to take a vehicle from their lineup and stack it up against a vehicle in his lineup, and he'd be able to compare them both, and he'd win out every single time. He'd know all the factory incentives, the APRs. He'd know the obscure programs like the college grad and the military discount, the exclusions and all the paperwork and the requirements that he had to go ahead and take advantage of those programs. He would know the entire used vehicle lineup. He would do that by knowing the trades he took in. He would know the trades you took in. He would be all over any new inventory purchased by the used car buyer from auctions throughout each week. He would go ahead and get to know everybody in every single department, and not just know everybody, but he'd know how those departments work and how they operate. He'd master all the dealership processes, and he'd do this all and maneuver through all of them with style and grace. In four words, he would be a student of the game. He would never quit learning, and what he would end up doing as a result is establish himself as an authority figure when it comes to selling vehicles at this particular store. The second way you can ethically create the power of authority is by dress and appearance. Doctors wear lab coats, they wear scrubs. Policemen, firemen, they wear badges and they wear uniforms. Business people wear suits. In fact, the suit 
is the uniform of success. And we usually see a relationship between authority and success. In Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, he cites a study on dress where he asked a 31-year-old lab assistant to dress in two types of outfits. Now, the first outfit was a nice, cleanly pressed suit with a tie, dress slacks, dress shirt, and polish shoes. The second outfit was simply a dress shirt and dress slacks. Now, he's positioned at a traffic stoplight, and nearby there's researchers watching and marking the experiment. Now, what they did was they counted how many times people followed him and jaywalked through the stoplight. What they found was that pedestrians were three and a half times more likely to follow the experiment assistant when he wore a suit versus the casual outfit. Now, when it comes to dressing for the lot, am I advising you to start hawking the lot and pounding the blacktop in a suit? Well, no. And yes. I mean, ultimately, what you wear comes down to the dealership's dress code. If you're a luxury store, they may ask you to wear a suit and tie every day. However, many dealerships have moved to a polo shirt or a button-down shirt or a combination of either of them, depending on the time of year, with the dealership name embroidered on the, on the side of the shirt. Now, if that's the case, what I would advise is buy five, six, seven pairs of each. That way you can always have them cleaned and pressed and you're always looking sharp no matter which one you're wearing. Now, if you're left to purchase your own khakis or slacks, dress belt and shoes, what I would advise is this. Get yourself the nicest khakis or slacks and belt that you can afford. And then I would get durable shoes, but yet nice dress, comfortable shoes that also look sharp. And the reason for all of this is it may cost you a little bit more money in the, in the, in the short term. However, in the long run, typically when you buy more durable, high quality items, they're going to last a little bit longer, which in turn will save you more money. And not only are you going to save money, you're going to feel better. Your attitude is going to be heightened because you look that much better. And then lastly, I mean, we're trying to build authority. And we said that the power of authority is built with dress and appearance. So this is going to help push that forward and give you that authority figure that you're trying to build. I do understand that in today's society, there's been a major paradigm shift when it comes to wearing a suit in a business meeting. And that Business casual or even casual sometimes has now become the norm for these types of settings. Also, if I'm in your spot, I'm going to question the practicality of wearing a suit, especially if I'm working on a lot in Tampa Bay, Florida in the middle of the summer. Now, before you disagree with me totally and decide that you're going to go ahead and do the khakis and the polo shirt, let me offer you this advice from my grandma. I like to call it Grandma Youngren's Travel Rule. And if you follow this rule, you'll never be over or underdressed for any type of social situation ever again. You may be wondering, what is Grandma Youngren's travel rule? Well, my grandma, God rest her soul, if she told me once, she would have told me a thousand times, Chris, when you go on any type of trip, always make sure you take a suit with you. Take a suit, a dress shirt, tie, and a belt with some shoes. That way you're never over or underdressed. Now, the first time I heard this, I questioned my grandmother and I said, well, what if I arrive at the event or the party or wherever I'm going and I am overdressed, I've got the suit on and everybody's wearing casual outfits. She said, that's easy. You can always dress down, but it's hard to dress back up. So if you're dressed up and you arrive at that situation and it's a casual setting, then you just lose the jacket, lose the tie, roll your sleeves up, undo your collar and you're ready to go. You're going to fit right in. So what's your opinion of what you should wear at the dealership? Should it be a full suit or should you just go with the polo and the khakis? I'd like to know your answers. Leave us a comment. We'd all like to know. The third and final factor that helped lead to the creation of authority are titles. General, president, doctor, lawyer. These titles are usually associated with hard work, paying your dues, experience, and a high degree of success. In fact, in a famous study on authority bias and titles, they took pilots and co-pilots and asked them to get into flight simulators. Then they asked the pilots to go ahead and make purposeful errors, errors that were so obvious that any first year co-pilot would be able to go ahead and pick up on. Now the results were kind of startling because 25% of the time, the co-pilots went ahead and let the plane crash just so they didn't have to question the authority of the pilot. Even Kobe Bryant was smart enough to let Shaq take the game over when he didn't have the answers to their team's opposing players. And in auto sales, think about it. 
Salespeople use management approval all the time to hedge their bets and to create some doubt when the customer's making offers or we're making offers to customers. I mean, if I can get my manager to do this, if she will do this, will you? So because of this, it causes some guests to think that if the manager hasn't come in and given that last discount or said that we're all done, that there's maybe some more discount to be had or more money for their trade that's available. And my opinion is if you don't take every guest that doesn't purchase and turn them over to a sales manager, you're missing out on easy deals, easy deals that could easily be closed just by using the title on the sales manager's name badge. Well, there you have it, using the power of authority to close more car sales. To learn more techniques like this, click on one of these two videos and you'll go ahead and learn how a cognitive bias can persuade more car sales and help you close more deals.